Good evening, bipeds. Stephen Sashin, uh, co-founder from zeroshoes.com and zeroshoes.eu and zeroshoes.co.uk. This is um, our monthly Ask Me Anything, where you can ask me anything. And this is technically a live event, so if you're watching live, welcome. If you're not watching live, that's cool. If you're either one of those, you can put comments below. I will see them over here on my screen. And when I look over there, wait, I'm going to rearrange. When I look over there, you'll know why. So I see, you can see your comments. And I'm just here to answer your comments and question, answer your comments, respond to your comments, answer your questions about zero shoes, about barefoot or minimalist footwear, about how to make that transition to barefoot or minimalist footwear. Is barefoot or minimalist footwear right for you? How do you make that decision? How do you pick which shoe? How do you pick which brand? How do you, what am I going to make for dinner? Um, whatever you've got a question for, I'm going to come up with an answer and I might have to make one up, but you know, you, you do what you can. Um, for those of you who are new to zero shoes, I'm going to do the world's quickest introduction. So let me grab a shoe to do that. Let's take this one. This is the shoe that I wore today. I'm not pulling it off my foot. So zero shoes, this principle is really, really simple. We're here to help you feel what you've been missing, natural comfort, performance, and health. And the way we do that is really simple. We just try to make shoes that are made for human feet. So what does that mean? Well, you have a quarter of the bones and joints of your whole body in your feet and ankles. They're supposed to move. If they can't move, which is about balance and agility and mobility, then that function tries to move upstream to your ankle, your knee, your hip, and your back, which are not wired for that. So that can cause a bunch of problems at the end of the day when you're not letting your feet do their job and you're forcing those jobs onto joints that aren't made for that. Secondly, you have a quarter, uh, sorry, you have more nerve endings in the soles of your feet than anywhere but your fingertips and your lips. So your brain can feel what you're stepping on or in and therefore knows how to control your body over whatever terrain you're you're on, helping you move with balance, agility, mobility. If you can't feel anything, that's not a good thing. So how do we address all those? First, with a wider foot-shaped toe box, your toes don't get squeezed together. They, they can spread and splay. You don't do push-ups like this. You do push-ups like this because that's better force production, better balance, better stability. Same thing with your feet. In fact, if you aren't wearing zero shoes, if you're wearing things that have toe boxes that are pointy like this, next time you go to put on a pair of shoes like this, before you put them on, look at your foot. And if your foot is not shaped like this, ask yourself, what might happen if I put a foot-shaped thing and squeeze it into a non-foot-shaped thing? What might that be like at the end of the day? And if it is shaped like this, guess what? It ain't supposed to be. So that's only from squeezing your foot into things that are not foot-shaped. So anyway, wider foot-shaped toe box. Low to the ground for balance and agility. The higher you get off the ground, the tippier you get. We don't elevate your heel because that messes with your posture and then you have to, it tips you forward a little bit. Then you have to find a way to lean back literally by uh, either doing it at your ankles or your knees or your hips or your back or some combination thereof, which can put stress on those body parts because they're not aligned properly. So we don't elevate your heel. We don't have a thing called toe spring. That means you can't actually get your foot flat to the ground. That puts strain on the tendons in your toes like that. Kind of makes sense. Um, and then our soles are designed to be uh, grippy and give you traction and protection, but also thin enough to give you that ground feeling that your brain is looking for to know how to move your body effic efficiently, effectively, and perhaps most importantly, enjoyably. Oh, and our soles are made to be really durable. They're backed with a 5,000 mile sole warranty. Like all zero shoes. Uh, oh, I don't have one in here. How ironic. Um, zero, wait, hold on. Let me grab another shoe. We make our shoes so that they've got a removable Two, two to three millimeter sock liner or insole. Keep it in if you want a little more protection. Take it out if you want a more barefoot feel. Someone took it out of this one for a more barefoot feel. And last but not least, zero shoes are so lightweight. People have literally gone to bed still wearing them because they forgot they had them on. I just talked to someone earlier today who normally never wears shoes in the house. And his wife has said to him like five times, what are you doing with your shoes on? Because he had come back from a hike and had literally forgotten that he was even wearing them. So, uh, Aaron says, I need shoes to accommodate a large bunion on my right foot. Yes, my alignment's out of whack. My goal is to start exercising and regain my strength after weight and muscle loss after or after illness. What I can say, depending on um, you know how big that bunion is, a couple things. One, you might want to play with toe spreaders. We don't sell them, but if you look it up, look up toe spreaders, you'll find a couple like from Correct Toes or our friends at Naboso, N-A-B-O-S-O. Um, and you may have to go to a wider shoe to begin with, which is technically a men's shoe. It's just that the men, statistically men's shoes a little wider and a little lower volume. Women's shoes a little narrower, a little higher volume. So uh, don't don't be dismayed by the men's versus women's. If you need to switch, if you're say a women's 
eight year men's six and a half roughly. And by the way, if we do sizing as a personal preference thing, I can take three people with identical feet, put them in the same shoe and they'll have three opinions about whether it fits like, uh, like the, the three bears. Is that what they're called? Um, so we do free exchanges if the sizing is incorrect, FYI. Alrighty. Aaron says sizes are confusing. Well, again, there is no perfect size, but again, if you're making the switch from women's to men, it's just that one and a half difference. Women's eight, men's six and a half. Women's 10, men's eight and a half. That's the idea. Mumtaz, um, is Sport Pursuit in the UK a verified affiliate? I have no idea. Um, I'd have to check. I don't keep track. We have over a thousand affiliates, so I don't know. I'd have to look them up and I can't do that while I'm doing this. You can drop an email to us at support here. I'll throw this in here. Uh, caption, you can throw this in. Uh, drop an email to, um, that's not what I wanted. Uh, do this one. Drop an email to, there we go, our customer happiness team. Um, oh, it says at either support. Uh, it also has their phone number here. Wait, I'm going to edit that and put in their phone number. Uh, or 303-447-3100. There we go. Save that. Post that. Um, come on. There we go. So um, sometimes you can drop an email to them and they'll have an answer for you because I don't know off the top of my head. Back to the comments. Uh, yikes, got to scroll back up. Uh, Oliver, what do you think of lumbar support and car seats or mattresses? Funny you should answer or ask that. Um, yeah, I think support of any kind can get in the way of letting your body do what's natural. If you support your elbow by putting your, your elbow, by putting your arm in a cast, guess what happens? Everything around that gets weaker. Same thing with your feet. And that's proven by research, putting arch support in the shoes of healthy individuals, reduce the strength and muscle mass in their feet by up to 17% in just 12 weeks. And uh, talking about lumbar support for your back, let me show you the chair that I'm sitting on. This is my chair. It does a whole lot of that. So this is basically zero shoes for your butt. <laughs> this is a company called QOR, Core, QOR 360. So I'm a big fan of letting your body be aligned as much as you can so it can work and move instead of supporting. Look, support feels good because it's turning your muscles off. You do the math. Uh, um, jerk, jerk, uh, games. How would sprinting feel like in the Genesis compared to the Speed Force? I've done both. And in fact, I'm a, for people who don't know, I'm a master's all-American sprinter. So for men over the age of 60, I'm like the 20, 20 to the 25th fastest guy in the country, somewhere in there. And that's only because I didn't get enough races in during the indoor season to see if I could move that down into the teens. Um, I both train and compete in the Speed Force. And so... Um, it's barely heavier than the Genesis, frankly. So I'm a, just a big fan of having something like this where I know I can even handle lateral motion if I'm running the 200, for example, which is not my favorite race. In fact, I hate that race. Um, and I wouldn't do that in the Genesis. I've done a lot of my drills and training in the Genesis or in bare feet, and then I put on these. Uh, Peter, did I know that Vivo Barefoot is making a 3D printed shoe? I do know that. I'm not a big fan of the whole idea of 3D printing, frankly. Because again, the personal preference thing is, there's two reasons. The personal preference thing is a big deal. So you can make something that is totally molded to your foot, but that doesn't mean you're going to like the feel of it. Because for example, people have different opinions about how much space they want in front of their toes, which is impacted by the materials and the construction. And a lot of the materials um, are, well, I can't remember, frankly, uh, everything that they're doing with that shoe and if it's fully 3D printed or, so, or parts of it are 3D printed. But the problem with 3D printing right now is it's not economical and it's slow. You can't really do it at scale. Um, Adidas, or if you want to be pretentious and correct, Adidas, they had a whole 3D printing lab in Georgia and they shut it down because they just couldn't find a way to be able to make stuff at scale at a price that was going to make sense for people. Peter, should you sleep in a bed with no support? There's a lot of arguments about that one too, where um, there are people who have gone to harder mattresses or firmer mattresses or, or back to futons or tatami mats and have found that that's been helpful. I'm not going to tell you what to sleep on, um, but you know, it, it is interesting to start questioning some of these things that we all take as just obvious. We need a mattress with a lot of cushion or not. We need shoes with a lot of cushion or not. By the way, here's the thing with cushioning and shoes. This is going to sound crazy. I'm going to do the world's fastest physics lesson. The research shows that cushioning doesn't cushion. It doesn't reduce the impact forces that you feel in your body. And in fact, it sends the impact forces into joints that aren't wired to feel impact, which is why shoes with a lot of cushioning tend to lead to more knee, hip, and back problems. 
So here's the physics lesson. It's the difference between pressure and force. I don't know if, any, if, any, if everyone has seen it, but there's an old, old movie. It's a slow motion film, one of the first slow motion films ever made of a big fat guy taking a cannonball to the stomach, okay? So when the cannonball hits him in the stomach, two things happen. He bends, he flexes at the waist, and you see ripples of fat spreading out from where the cannonball hits him. That's pressure. So he's adapting to the pressure. But the force sends this like 300, 350 pound guy, you know, like five feet back. That's the force. So with cushioning in a shoe, it spreads out the pressure. So the receptors in your feet don't feel the pressure and have to respond to it. But the force is still going somewhere. And again, typically into your knee, hip and back. Do with that what you will. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. A lot of things came in. Hold on. Let me uh, do this. Um, love the chair. I just listened to the whole podcast on the movement movement about it. Thanks. Um, Chris says, just got my Ridgeway Lowe's. I love these shoes. I also love that the toe cover bumper is way tougher than the Scrambler. The new Scrambler, the Scrambler Mid 2, um, has a, a um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A much more durable toe bumper, FYI. And I haven't mentioned it yet, but if you don't know, we are, wait, I'm going to go back to the captions. Uh, and do this. Um, we are having our spring product sale. If you go to zeroshoes.com or zeroshoes.eu or zeroshoes.co.uk, you'll see six, six, six new products for the spring of 24 that are on sale 20% off or more, 20% plus between now and the 27th of this month. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'll talk about that on Wednesday, frankly. So let's go back to, yikes, let's go back to the questions. Hold on. Let me see what I got. Sorry. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Odd man in the sea. Good to see you. There's an opportunity to make an ultralight water crossing shoe camp shoe for hikers to compete with Crocs. You mean like this, the Aqua X Sport that is our crazy lightweight trail friendly sole with a upper that you can probably, you might be able to see me through this, that water shoots out of it. I'm telling, I'm going to tell you something that's happening with this shoe that I'm really, really happy about. There are six women who are going to row a boat around Great Britain uh, in a project they're calling Sea Change, S-E-A Change, but also about C, S-E-E -E, Change. Because when they've done this before and they're doing it again, they're showing just what's happening with pollution and all these things that are not good for the water. Um, I just sent them some of these just to test them. This is the shoe they're going to be wearing when they row all the way around Great Britain. This is the shoe, it's my wife's favorite shoe during the summer because it's so breathable. It just air like flows through. And when we're on a trail here in Colorado, if there's a stream and people are trying to figure out how to walk across it without getting wet, we just walk right through and like you step out and the water just shoots out of the sides. So there's that. Odd uh, man in the seat of Peter, check out Katie Bowman. She's gone barefoot sleeping, uh, AKA minimalist cushioning and low or no pillow. Oh, there you go. Um, actually, out of curiosity, do you have a repair program like Rechaco where you can fix people's zero shoes that need slight repairs? It depends on what the slight repair is. Our shoes are backed by a 24 month manufacturer's warranty. So if there's something that goes wrong because of that, then we can take care of it. But we don't, we're not doing something like Rechaco because what they're doing is they're just ripping off the bottom couple layers and then putting that back on and or replacing the webbing. But we don't have a whole bunch of layers. So we're not a big, thick thing. Like when you have a big, thick shoe with a bunch of layers, you can hide your mistakes. It's easier to fix things. Um, we're not in that situation. So Jared, again, what's the difference between the trail foam and bare foam? Um, slight density. The trail foam, slightly more dense to be just better at taking out the bumps. The bare foam, slightly less dense to give you a slightly more um, comfortable feeling. But frankly, even with the bare foam, the amount of give in that is like half a millimeter. And here's a weird evolutionary biology thing. People put on um, like the Z-Trail sandal right there, which has bare foam on the top. And they go, oh my God, it's so comfortable, but it's only squishing like half a millimeter. So my suspicion is there was something during our evolution where that little bit of squishiness told us something good is right around the corner. Food, water, shelter, I don't know, but it is amazing how people respond to that. Eric, correct the foot craves stability when it doesn't get it landing on the cushion shoe. I believe you actually inadvertently put more force, force in the ground in search for stable ground. You're absolutely right. Your brain makes you land harder to get some kind of feedback when you have cushioning in the shoe. Eric, loving my HFS too. It's a bit more durable than the Prio. Love the Prio as well, though. Happy to hear that. Peter, did I hear that? Um, Adidas came out with a study that 30% of people that wear their shoes have injuries. That's actually uh, even crazier. On the Nike website, it's, I think you might be talking about Nike. 
On the Nike website, on their Run Fearless page, they have a portion of an abstract of a study. They only put a portion of it because if they showed the whole study, it would not look good. But even the portion they put on there is very interesting. It showed they were comparing their best-selling running shoe at the time, the Zoom Structure 22, to a new shoe, the React Infinity Run. The way they publicized it was the new shoe reduced injuries by 52% in a 12-week half marathon training program. It's true, but the Zoom structure injured 30.3% of the people in just 12 weeks, and injury rates don't stay consistent over time. They go up over time. The new shoe only, wait, air quotes around only, only injured 14.5% of the people. And again, injury rates go up. It's been sort of apocryphal that runners, 80% uh, of runners and sorry, 50% of runners and 80% of marathoners get injured every year. This is Nike showing a that shoes can injure people and different shoes injure people at different rates. And you may ask what's different between the zoom structure and the react infinity run. They, the quote from the study, which they haven't published was we removed many of the protective features. They made it a little more like this, but not even close to this. You might also ask, well, if this one's so much better than this one, why are you still selling this one? And are you making everything like this? And the answer is, nope, they're not. Didn't change a thing. After four and a half years, they now have two shoes with less protective features. The other, you know, my thing is if we injured 14 and a half to 30% of the people in 12 months, let alone 12 weeks, I'd be doing this call from my jail cell. So yeah, there's a study showing that regular shoes injure people at a significant rate. Uh, odd man of the sea. I have the Aqua X, but I need to be a slip on clog style. Um, yeah, I don't have that. I mean, it's got the speed lace, which is as close as we can get right now. Uh, the problem with a clog is to make clogs work. They have to be stiff because otherwise they will, they'll, they'll, you'll step right out of them. And we're not there yet. We're working on a slidey kind of thing. Uh, I developed one that was brilliant for 50% of the people who wore it. If the foot geometry was right, it was awesome. But for the other half, didn't work at all working on it. Uh, let's see. New Balance has the endurance rubber outsole for tennis pickleball. Can we make something like it? I don't know, but we already have professional tennis and pickleball players playing in a number of our shoes. The Forza Trainer, the 360, even the Speed Force, um, and the Prio or Prio Neo. So I don't know what that endurance, that endurance rubber outsole is, but suffice it to say, um, uh, we've got pro tennis players and, and pickleball players already wearing our stuff. What's the sole thickness of the H trail? It's not on the website. Um, it should be, that's annoying. I don't know. And I don't have one with me. It's about the same as the Z trail, maybe a tiny bit thinner, like maybe a half a millimeter or so. I don't know off the top of my head. I will reach out to someone and complain that that's not on there, but it's about, it's similar to the Z trail. Chris, any help you can provide for collapsed arch? I have flat feet. My left foot seems to be closer to the ground than my right. I know if I go to a specialist, they'll say use orthotics, which I know won't fix the problem. Um, I can't answer that question because that would require me to actually see what's going on and do a bunch of diagnostic things. And I'm not a doctor and I don't play one on the internet. What I will suggest is reaching out to um, people who are barefoot friendly physical therapists or specialists. So you could reach out to um, the people at gate happens g a i t happens.com you could reach out to ray mcclanahan at northwest foot and ankle um, i don't remember the url but you could look that up you could reach out to um, emily splickle at naboso n-a-b-o-s-o.com there's many many more and i'm forgetting them and my apologies for all the people that i'm forgetting um, we want to make a list of like barefoot savvy physical therapists podiatrists etc and i just don't have that in my head um, but the fundamental thing is your, I mean, unless there's something really going on that's preventing you from building up strength by using your feet, then uh, you know that's the number one thing. There's gonna be some foot exercises you can do and also just walking around in either bare feet or something like zero shoes is shown to build foot strength. But I would definitely reach out to, um, start with those three and see if that's helpful. So gait happens, Naboso uh, and Northwest foot and ankle. Those are my three off the top of the bat. Can't stay on live, Cassidy says, but currently have my sandals on. Picked up another pair of zeros for this trip in order to receive a third pair for a long walking trip just last week. Love zero. Thank you for saying that. Send pictures, Cassidy. Uh, back to Jared. Um, can you comment on your new sprinting spike that I'm creating or am I completely off base? Nope, you're not off base. I can tell you it has no spikes. It weighs less than any spike you've ever seen. It has a 
special technology that I'm not allowed to talk about at all. And I can't say any more because I'm waiting to hear back from the developer that I'm working with about where we are in the project. He's had some health issues lately and I don't know more about it. Zach says, sup, bro. Um, right back at you. My, right back at you. He says, my zero shoes don't wear out because of my perfect stride. Uh, he's then laughing, crying. Um, but uh, so I just buy more and donut my old pairs. Question, who has more gray hair, you or me? I got this big gray thing happening here. But um, we'll have to get together and compare. I don't know. At 62, I think I'm doing okay in the gray hair department. My, considering that my grandfather, who I take after, was totally gray at 18, which I thought was going to happen to me when I was like 15 and I saw some gray coming in going, hey, yay, yay. But it worked out okay for him. Um, owl, what would it take to break the stranglehold that Nike, et cetera, have on the elite running scene? Uh, it would be great to see an elite marathon runner in a pair of zero shoes. Dollars. I mean, dollars. They What Nike does, I'll, I'll use basketball as an example. They do a similar thing for runners. Every new rookie basketball player gets like a significant contract from Nike with Nike hoping that they're going to find a breakout that's going to turn into the next, you know, Michael Jordan. And if they don't turn it out, out into something, then they get canned and they're, you know, SOL um, about sponsorship for a while. I can tell you there's some things that are going to happen with us in the fall that might have an impact in some professional sports, but that's all I can say. Chad, any word on steel toe, LOL? He says LOL because he knows that my answer is no. Uh, in fact, that thing that I just mentioned about pro sports is taking precedent over what we want to do for the um, work boot at this moment. But I've just been talking to our product team while we're working on that. It's not easy to make something that still gives you natural movement, especially once you have a protective toe. And there are a few interesting ideas that we're working on about that. So. Um, Mondu, uh, congrats on the new shoes. I really hope you can take the necessary steps to make it easier for Canadians to buy zero shoes right now. As of now, it's costly and not very convenient. Agreed. The, what it's going to take is a Canadian distributor, and we are trying to find a good one uh, that we can work with. Otherwise, because we need to be able to ship over containers of shoes to someone who can manage that. And we're working that. I got to tell you, it's one of these weird things where prior to the internet, everyone knew that, you know, just being in a multinational or global brand takes time to happen. But since the internet, everyone just assumes, oh, it's just easy. You just, you know, make it work. And it is really, really difficult and expensive. Mason says, love this. Thank you. Odd man. Can we have an affiliate program in the UK? Yeah, you can. You actually, it's the exact same affiliate program we have in the US. Just change the URL from zeroshoes.com slash whatever your affiliate link is to zeroshoes.co.uk. Done. Uh, and I'll make a note to make sure our our um, affiliate managers send out an email reminding people about that. Um, Ace Pilot, please, please, please make a slip resistant black boot. I walk six to 10 miles a day for work and would love to wear zeros at work. Thanks for your amazing products. So the boot thing we don't have, the shoe thing we have. So we have the Prio All Day SR for slip resistant, but we don't have a boot. And if you want a boot, do me a favor. Let me go back to the captions here. Go here to zeroshoes.com slash feedback leave that recommendation and ideally pictures or links to the kind of boot you're referring to because there's a lot of different kinds of boots and um, that would be really, really, really helpful. So zeroshoes.com slash feedback if you have suggestions or um, requests. Back to that and then back to the chat. By the way, I'm not going to stay on here really long because I got another meeting um, uh, in the not too distant future. Um, ever making steel toe boots, Peter says. Please, um, yep, I just addressed that. Bring back the Colorado. I had a conversation with our product team about that just the other day, uh, working on that. And FYI, the Colorado was a sort of, um, it was a sandal with a toe cap and protective stuff around the side. And again, it was a product that worked really, really well for like, 70% of the people wearing it, but that 30% became a problem. And we knew we could make it better anyway. So we're working on that. Chris, um, Zach is a sprinting guy. We'll have to go sprinting. Do the Ridgeway lows the same material as the new Scrambler mids? No. Um, the Ridgeway. Um, so this is the original Ridgeway, which is a retro style thing. The Ridgeway low is a mesh that is more breathable and more about kind of you know, an airy casual thing than the scramblers, which are more about a durable hiking boot. It's still a really protective thing, but it's not the same, not uh, not as, you know, completely rugged as the scramblers, um, which is partly why a different price point as well. So the scrambler series right now, the scrambler mid two and the mid two waterproof, they are just like the most high tech thing that we could possibly make. And as with every expensive ingredient we could put in it. And so for other things, especially for like the Ridgeway mesh low, which is a great approach shoe, great hiking shoe, casual hiking shoe, and a great shoe for just all day, every day. So um, slightly different 
game there. Uh, Torvald says, brilliant, Stephen. I don't know what you're talking about, but thanks. Travis replying to Chad, we need this even better composite and Coyote Brown for the military. All true. Here, Look, here's the deal. We are not a huge company. We don't have millions and millions of dollars in the bank behind us. So we just can't do everything we want to do as fast as we want to do it. We're working on that. But until we have, you know, buckets of money and all the people that would be required to take advantage of those buckets of money, it takes us time to do things, uh, which pains me to no end. I made most of my living for most of my life where I do something, I get paid, then we're done. And so the fact that it takes time to develop something new, let alone just make something, just makes my head explode. Uh, back to Jerry, can I please make a men's rain boot? Again, if you can go to zeroshoes.com slash feedback and request the men's version of the Gracie, which is there. That would be awfully helpful. Also, an insulation, insulated version would be great for slushy winters and people who cross streams constantly. Uh, what we have instead, because look, on this boot, it's only waterproof up to the gusseted tongue. That is the exact same height as the waterproofness on the Ridgeway, which is to right here. Wait, hold on. I'm going to measure them. Yeah, they are both waterproof to the exact same level. Do, that, do with that what you will. So the Ridgeway is waterproof. The Scrambler Mid-2 waterproof is waterproof. The Excursion Fusion is waterproof. Um, am I forgetting something? I think I might be. Oh, well, then Low Top, the Mesa Trail waterproof. Um, but FYI, for you know slushy winters and crossing streams, um, the Ridgeway, the Scrambler Mid-2 waterproof, the Excursion Fusion waterproof. Will, I'm intrigued by the Scrambler. Is that shoe good for pavement running or just trails? It's good for anything. It's, it's the same durable outsole that we use for all of our shoes, but it is made with a trail friendly sole. Uh, so do with that what you will. Peter, what about an affiliate program in Canada? Same, um, uh, same thing. So it's just our affiliate program for zeroshoes.com. And then it doesn't make a difference if you're in Canada or anywhere else in the world. You can refer people to us and you get um, commissions on the sales that, on the sales from new customers that you refer to us and all of their subsequent sale uh, orders because we do lifetime commissions. We believe if you drive new customers to us, you should get the benefit of that, not just a one-time benefit. And then we you know steal it away from you after that. So just go to zeroshoes.com, scroll to the bottom of the page. You'll find our link to sign up about being an affiliate. Travis got my review of the Mesa Trail. It's put up from uh, from South Korea. Um, thanks again. Thank you, Peter. Rain boots for maybe, oh, for men, maybe. Again, um, put in that request for something like the um, uh, the Gracie for men, or again, just wear one of our waterproof shoes. Uh, Mujador, Muja, wait, Mujahidur. I know I'm saying that wrong, but, um, but he says, hello. I'm saying hello back to you. My apologies for not knowing how to pronounce people's names. A Scrambler Mid-2 waterproof with a slip wrist and sole would be perfect. Cool. Submit that as a request at zeroshoes.com slash feedback. Uh, looking forward to the Scrambler 2 Lowe's then. Uh, yep, we are going to do the, well, so the Scrambler 2 Low will be the, it'll actually be the Scrambler Low WP for waterproof. Chad, agreeing someone um, above, bring back the Colorado. Got it. Uh, submit that at zeroshoes.com slash feedback. Uh, anyone ever ripped off your shoes and sold them? Well, there's there was a company that did a complete rip off of the Prio and sold it on, uh, tried to sell it on Amazon at like 20 bucks. And all these people jumped in, hey, that's just a rip off the Zero Shoes Prio, which it was, and they stopped selling them. Uh, Jared, I'm pretty much sold that you can run in any Zero Shoe. I ran uphill about a half a mile to grab something in a hurry in my slip on Aptos and it felt amazing still. Our Scrambler Mid, which again, I don't have one. Do I have one? Hold on. Uh, somewhere. I got to rearrange those so I know where everything is. The Scrambler Mid, it's a hiking boot. It's been reviewed twice as one of the best uh, top trail running shoes. Who knew? Uh, Chris, I'd like to see an Aura times two. I don't know what that means. Uh, aura times, times uh, oh, do you mean Aqua X2? Something with a more rugged upper. Um, that's a whole different game because we tried to make something really, really crazy lightweight and, you know, like with water shooting out of it. But again, for any of that time where any of you want to say something like I want or we need or whatever, 
don't tell me. Go to zeroshoes.com slash feedback. Submit it there. Ideally, be as specific as you can. If you're talking about a different style of something, throw in uh, like a link to an example of what you're talking about. So um, again, I need to cut this one kind of short because I had another meeting that I've got to do. Um, I'm thrilled that so many of you showed up. Just as a quick reminder, um, wait, before I do the reminder to Renee, which shoe is a good starter for baref barefoot shoe, dog walking, light hiking, anything, literally anything we make. Um, Deneen, uh, hi, would there ever be a possibility of a wider size or the shoes stretch a bit after wearing? I've been barefooted for six months to heal PF and, um, uh, and a heel spur and just got my first pair today. Um, depends on the shoe. Anything that's sort of, you know, meshy like this, it does stretch over time. Anything that's leather stretches over time. Anything that's canvas stretches over time. The only kind of things that don't stretch very much are things like, you know, the hiking boots, which will a little bit, but not a ton, or um, obviously like, you know, something that is solid rubber, that's not gonna stretch. Um, but by and large, almost everything we make that I'm looking at uh, does. In fact, somebody showed me, somebody showed me, uh, they said, I just got a, another pair of Prio and it seems like you've made it smaller. And we didn't, we made it on the exact same last, the mold that you build a shoe around, as the previous pair, but he'd been wearing the previous pair for like two years and they had stretched out. So it's like I said, if you remember from the, when you got that one, it was the same. And um, so there's that. But if you need something wide, wide, if you're a woman, you might switch to the men's side because they're just made a tiny bit wider, but they also do stretch. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jared, I'm still looking for podiatrists to tell you you have cranial rectal reorientation syndrome, but no luck. It's an ongoing joke. I wanna, like I, my, my podcast, I have a joke about that. Everybody's got a podcast. I'm so sick of it. Hear more about that on my podcast. But I have a podcast at, uh, at www.jointhemovementmovement. Movement. And I, at the end, I always say, you know, if you know someone who should be on the podcast, drop them a line. If you can find someone who thinks I have cranial rectal reorientation syndrome, it'd be fun to talk to them. But no one's taken me up on that. Uh, Deneen, loving the new shoes. Thank you. Bilal, do I recommend your shoes without insoles? We make all of our shoes so that you can either keep the insole or sock liner in if you want a little more protection or pull it out and uh, have a more barefoot feel. Total personal preference. Uh, um, Al, loving the HFS2, best shoe ever. Thank you. Deneen, I have the Daylight Hiker Fusion. Good to know. Um, again, that one is going to, well, since that's waterproof, that one's a little trickier for it to stretch because there's the extra waterproof membrane in there. So if you don't think that it fits, um, contact our customer happiness team and they can help you out. Chris, just bought a pair of zeros that are coming tomorrow. I'm super excited to wear them. Do I have any particular advice for an overweight, obese person transitioning to barefoot shoes? It's no different for you as it is for anybody else. The simplest thing, land with your feet underneath you. Don't kick your feet out in front of you and land on your heel and try to pull yourself forward. Just put your feet underneath you and um, just like anyone else, start slow. You're going to be using muscles, ligaments, and tendons that either you haven't used ever or for in years. And so it's like going to the gym. If you haven't been for a while, you don't just like dive right back in and you know, do whatever weight you did when you were a high school football player. You start really slow with an embarrassingly lightweight and an embarrassingly small number of reps and a humiliating small number of sets. And then you build up slowly based on your body saying, cool, let's do a little bit more. Bilal, what's our most barefoot feeling shoe in terms of lowest stack height? Speed Force. Um, uh, it's either the DIY sandal. Well, yes, the DIY sandals, but I thought he said for shoe. So I went for speed force. Otherwise the, um, uh, the Genesis sandal or the aqua cloud sandal. Deneen, thanks for answering my question. That's why I'm here. Bilal is removing the insole strength and feet muscles. What strengthens feet muscles is using them. And, um, so whether you keep the insole in or not, it's just a question of using your feet. And Chris says, thank you. Okay. I'm going to try and wrap it up because I'm late for a meeting now. So just a quick reminder, go to zeroshoes.com or zeroshoes.eu or zeroshoes.uk. If you have any suggestions or questions or sorry, suggestions or requests, go there, zeroshoes.com slash feedback. If you have any questions, our customer happiness team in the U S this is the U S info for UK and, um, uh, and .eu. They've got info there about how to ha get help from the team over there. And also remember that we have our spring product sale where you can save 20% plus on our six new styles. Uh, the plus means if you buy, you get 20% off if you buy one of the new styles, an extra 5% off if you buy at least two different styles. So that's going on through March 27th. You can also register to win a hundred dollar, hundred pound or hundred euro zero shoes gift certificate when you go and check out the new shoes. Just go to our regular site. Just go there. You'll find a big obvious link at the top 
for where you can click to find out about the sale. And uh, most importantly, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's for dinner? Um, that's a great question. I have to ask my wife. I, you know, tonight I'm like really lazy. It might, might just be high tech grilled cheese. So that's grilled cheese with um, grilled onions and a thin layer of like jam of some sort. Really killer combination. Okay. Um, this is a real, real pleasure for me. Uh, as many of you know, I love doing this, but more importantly, I'm just so grateful for all of you because if you're new to Zero Shoes, just the fact that you're here is wonderful and amazing. And we can't wait to hear what happens when you discover or feel what you've been missing, natural comfort, performance, and health. And for everyone who's been around Zero Shoes, we're so grateful. The number one thing that sells Zero Shoes is the experience of Zero Shoes and the people who've had that experience sharing that with friends and family and the strangers who just bump into you on the street and say, hey, what are those? Or aren't those Zero Shoes? Or didn't I see those on Shark Tank? So, um, well, now Peter hasn't heard of my high-tech grilled cheese. Now you know. So, um, uh, so again, Lena and myself, we started the company 14 and a half years ago. Never imagined it was going to be like this. Never imagined we would have helped well over a million and a half, like closing in on 2 million people discover the fun and benefits of natural movement. But again, it's all because of you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like I said, I, for new people, I hope you come and find out what it's like to feel what you've been missing for everybody else, new and old. Most importantly, I'm going to sign off by saying, go out, have fun and live life feet first.